Imagine standing at the base of a building so vast, it stretches beyond the horizon. Now picture that building not going up, but out, straight, for nearly 170 kilometers. A single, mirrored wall slicing through the desert, taller than most skyscrapers and longer than any man-made structure on Earth. This isn't science fiction. This is Saudi Arabia's most radical urban project, and they've already started building it. This is not a city as we know it. There are no cars, no roads, no urban sprawl, just a massive vertical megastructure called the Line, designed to house 9 million people in the middle of the desert. It sounds impossible, but this is not just a fantasy cooked up in a boardroom. Billions of dollars are being poured into it. Bulldozers are already on site and plans are moving at breakneck speed. The Line is either the future of cities or the biggest gamble in modern architecture. So what is it really? And can it actually be built? Let's take a deep dive inside one of the boldest mega projects the world has ever seen. What is the line? The line is part of Saudi Arabia's larger vision called Neom, a futuristic region being developed in the northwest corner of the country near the Red Sea. At the heart of Neom is this astonishing concept, a city that is exactly 170 kilometers long, 200 meters wide, and 500 meters high. To put that in perspective, 500 meters is taller than the Empire State Building. Now stretch that height in a straight line for nearly the distance between London and Birmingham, or from Los Angeles to San Diego. That's what we're talking about. This linear city is designed to be entirely pedestrian. No cars, no streets, no traditional road networks. Instead, residents will move using ultra-high-speed transit that can take you from one end of the line to the other in just 20 minutes. Every essential service, schools, clinics, shops, will be within a five-minute walk, and everything will be powered by renewable energy. From above, it will look like a narrow strip of glass cutting across desert and mountain. But inside, it's planned as a fully self-contained city stacked vertically with layered zones for living, working, and transport, all enclosed within its mirrored walls. The why behind the madness. So, why is Saudi Arabia doing this? Why not just build another Dubai? The answer lies in Saudi Arabia's long-term strategy to transform its economy. For decades, the kingdom has relied heavily on oil revenues, but as the world shifts towards renewables and decarbonization, the country knows it needs to diversify. That's where Vision 2030 comes in, a bold blueprint to make Saudi Arabia a global hub for innovation, tourism, and technology. Neom, and especially the line, is the centerpiece of that vision. It's meant to showcase Saudi Arabia as a leader in futuristic living, a place where urban life doesn't come at the expense of the environment, where AI, automation, and sustainability go hand in hand. A kind of utopia, if you believe the sales pitch. But there's more than image at stake here. The kingdom is investing over 500 billion US dollars into Neom. That's half a trillion. It's a gamble with enormous geopolitical and financial implications. If it works, it redefines the Middle East. If it fails, it becomes one of the most expensive cautionary tales in urban history. How do you build a 170 km skyscraper? Now, here's the big question. How do you actually construct something this massive? Well, the first challenge is scale. No one has ever attempted a linear city of this size before. The engineering required is beyond anything we've seen. Foundations must be laid across uneven terrain desert, rock, and mountains, and all of it must align perfectly in a straight line. Then comes the structure. The two sides of the line will essentially act as gigantic walls, 500 meters tall. Inside, everything will be built upward and inward. Think of it like slicing a regular city down the middle, standing it up on its side and sealing it off in glass. The interior is divided into modules or units, each designed as a mini neighborhood. Stacked vertically, these units will include homes, offices, shops, entertainment, and even greenery. The transportation layer will run underground, beneath the core living spaces, using high-speed autonomous rail. The outer surface will be a continuous mirror, reflecting the natural landscape and supposedly blending the structure into its environment. It's meant to reduce the visual impact. But in reality, it's a technological marvel in itself. We're talking about maintaining a polished, mirrored surface across an unbroken stretch of 170 kilometers in harsh desert conditions. What will life inside be like? If you live inside the line, your experience will be unlike anything on Earth. 
There are no commutes, no traffic jams, no need for cars. Everything you need is right there. The five-minute city concept is taken to the extreme. You can work, eat, exercise, and socialize without ever needing to leave your vertical neighborhood. There's also no weather problem. The structure is climate controlled. The goal is to use artificial intelligence to manage air quality, temperature, lighting, and even noise levels. You won't need to step outside unless you want to. And if you do want to travel, the high-speed transit line beneath the city takes you across its entire length in just 20 minutes. Compare that to crossing any major city by car. We're talking about saving hours each week. But the psychological effects of this kind of living are still unknown. What does it do to people to live entirely enclosed in a mirrored corridor far removed from natural chaos and randomness? Will it feel like a utopia or a digital prison? Behind the glossy renderings are some of the biggest names in architecture, design, and engineering. Firms like Morphosis, led by Pritzker Prize-winning architect Tom Main, have been tasked with making this fantasy real. Consultants, construction giants, and thousands of workers are already involved in the early stages. But don't be fooled, this is a project on a scale that will test even the most experienced teams. Getting materials to the remote site alone is a logistical challenge. Coordinating construction across a straight-line footprint that spans nearly 200 kilometers, that's a nightmare. Still, progress is underway. Satellite images have shown groundwork beginning on the first zones. Temporary worker housing has been set up, foundations are being poured. This is not just an idea on paper anymore, it's breaking ground. The controversies. No project this big comes without criticism, and the line has plenty. First, the displacement of people. Reports suggest that tribes living in the Eniam area have been forcibly moved to make way for the development. Human rights organizations have raised alarms. The Saudi government, however, insists it is acting within legal frameworks and offering compensation. Then there's the environmental impact. Despite its green branding, building a mega structure in the middle of a desert will inevitably disturb ecosystems. The mirrored surface alone could confuse or harm wildlife. Critics argue that a city claiming to be sustainable shouldn't start by bulldozing pristine wilderness. Finally, there's the question of feasibility. Can the line actually attract 9 million residents? Will people from around the world flock to a city with no cars and no sky view? Or will it become an expensive ghost town, a modern-day Atlantis swallowed by sand and ambition? A glimpse into the future. Whether you believe in it or not, the line represents something deeper a shift in how we think about cities. Urban sprawl is becoming unsustainable. Traditional infrastructure is breaking under pressure. Climate change demands new thinking. The line, for all its flaws, is an attempt to answer that. It's bold, it's dramatic, and yes, it's deeply flawed, but that's what makes it fascinating. If even half of it gets built, it will redefine architecture. If all of it gets built, it will change how we live. A 170-kilometer skyscraper, 500 meters high, in the middle of the Saudi desert? This is not just a city. It's a bet. A bet on technology, on design, on ambition. A bet that the future can be written in glass and steel, on a straight line across sand. And that's what makes it one of the most extraordinary mega-projects of our time. Of our time.